what happens to someone who tries to hurt the two witnesses? What about that fire comes from their mouths and consumes them? Well, the fire is from every part of them, their eyes, their mouth, their fingers, their feet, their belly, their heart. So um, the, heart, the fire comes first out of their fingers. They'll send you a rebuke from the word of God. The Lord is one speaking. We don't speak. So here's your rebuke. What's the words from God? Uh, we'll say the white horseman is Jesus. We'll give you like a hundred scriptures about it. We'll say get if you filled with the spirit. We'll give you uh, 35 scriptures about it. We'll say um, the two witnesses are a woman and a child. We'll give you a hundred whole chapters about it. So if you don't believe it, well, fire comes out. We'll give you a new bad name. The new bad name is going to stick with you because we got the secret. The new name seals. That's important. The new names. That's a seal. And then there's other things that happen. Because God considered it blasphemy. You're speaking about against him because he lives in us. And there's all kinds of reasons you think you can do it. The children's stories. Saying be filled with spirit. We try to get you healed. Uh, we're saying uh, we're giving you new names. People kick us out from new names. Kick us out for running us for rapture. Kick us out for giving the pastor a, a song. Kick us out for wanting to talk to somebody. Kick us out for, uh, what else? For, oh, uh, what else? For saying to get off your sorcery medication. Oh, my goodness. That is vile abomination. They test a lot of that stuff on aborted babies. They put them in there. The colors, even. The food colorings. Yeah. The additives in the food. The fake smells and the shampoo and the soap and the fakery and the makeup. That comes from aborted babies. A lot of they use them. They, they to, take aborted babies and they're not even dead. They take eternal cells from those aborted babies. Combine them with a the mouse. That's the abomination mouse in Isaiah, 26, Isaiah 66. The abomination. That's how they made the mark of the beast. That's how we knew it was the mark of the beast. <laughs> uh, the mark is here whether you like it or not. It's not maybe not enforced yet. But, yep, it's here. Change of people. I mean, there may be some got placebos, I hope, because we did try to sabotage it. And I did see some of them, but, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of things that, oh, uh, you guys, uh, kick us out for the, the Mark of the Beast method, too. And then there's other things. What else? The uh, Babylon Anthem. Jeremiah gave me a new rendition of the Babylon Anthem. Change the words. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty badass. Jeremiah gives me the hardest words ever. And people could call, could call them false prophets. Because, you know, Jeremiah gave me a song. And I can just post it on your YouTube. Here's a song from the, the uh, Jer Jeremiah 20, 23 about you. And here it is. It's convicting. <laughs> like, get out. This is the word of God, people. The word of God. You're going to cast out God? You think you're sneaking God. People are giving him lip service and they're not even giving him the heart. He wants your heart, people. He wants everything. What's your heart? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That means everything you got. He's not going to take less than that. Uh, he wants you to love him back. He loves you passionately. He wants to give you good things. He feeds, he will feed you with the finest of wheat. And, um, uh, provide for you richly if you love him back and you do what he wants it's not that hard to please god either love your brother as yourself give to them and and you don't you know walk in the spirit when you walk in the spirit you won't gratify the deeds of the flesh so that means the spirit when you combine the spirit with the word of god you can't just go off on the spirit because there's other spirits talk to you right so people don't have much discernment so the bible the Spirit uses the Bible to back it up. So if you have a word or something, make sure you got a lot of verses about it, right? And uh, he usually gives 100. But he got for the rhinoceros rapture, I guess he gave me a 10, uh, 10 verses about it. The rhinoceros is going to be raptured, <laughs> folks. And uh, the rhinoceros is also a, a, a comparable of Jesus and the bride. And the, actually, the, um, the all of the the four horsemen, actually. And so the horsemen aren't bad guys. The wheels, the wheels and the, the chariots of God, right? The eyes of God, they're searching. The horsemen in Zechariah eat the heart of God and they, they control the earth. They're sent by God. They're not sent by Satan. 
Um, and you know what? There's all kinds of things that I can tell you guys about. Hey, it's so fantastic. I wish I could, but you guys do not believe. <laughs> so little faith. People do have so many little faith. Some, I have a few that do. Man, they are blessed. They are blessed. Oh, hallelujah. And um, he gave me gifts for you guys. And um, I, Psalm 68, uh, she's flying among the on gold and silver. We got flying up to heaven and went to the throne of God. And asked for mercy because we, he was about to ready to store us all. And asked for mercy, he gave it to me. I said, you need to destroy me because I did the same thing. Uh, I was like using the medication, sorcery stuff. And so um, he didn't. He forgave me. And so then uh, so I went to the throne and asked for mercy. And he gave me gifts. He gave me like half the kingdom. And he started pouring out on me. One time he poured out river, living water all over me for like three days. He took me to a boat in heaven, a boat in the middle of the sky somewhere. And uh, it was cool. And uh, showed me around, took me to Eden, showed me around, took me to heaven, showed me around. I see heaven open like God on steroids. And uh, so the two witnesses fire comes out of their mouth. It calls it blasphemy, blasphemy when you uh, rebuke us or don't uh, heart our messages. and. You can ask questions, of course, and stuff, but don't be rude. Because if you come in there rude, um, we don't even have to kick you out. God kicks you out. He'll turn you over to Satan. You taught not to blaspheme. That means excommunicating you. And he does it a lot. Oh, he'll go vomit you up. We've been vomiting the lukewarm with him. And uh, he's not happy with a lot of you guys. So I don't know why people think he's so happy. He's going to come get you any minute. He ain't happy. You got to clean up yourself before you want it, before you meet God, and that's not your physical house. That's your spiritual house inside of you. Make the inside of your cup clean. The outside will it'll be all right. Yep, inside of your cup. Whitewash tombs out there. You're in a lip service, and um, the people who are lying about the two witnesses saying, "Oh, they're men." Yeah, Moses and Elijah, you know that they had to be entered the state and their gate. They had to be overcomers. They started from Revelation 1 on. Uh, John is one of them. He posted letters to the church. He's the one that wrote about it. John's the one that wrote about it. He's the one that got the, the reed and the and wore the sackcloth. And he's the one that, that got the persecution on the island of Patmos. And he's the one that that wrote the letters. He's the one that saw heaven open and the animals singing. Met the 24 elders. Met the dead in Christ singing up there. And he's the one in, in Isaiah 11. And uh, <laughs> the pet prophet that puts his hand by the cockatrice den. He's a daredevil too. He's like, I dare you devil try to bite me. You can't touch me. <laughs> That's the way I am too. You know, I was born a daredevil. Um, I used to smack wasps and run away. See how fast... <laughs> See if they can get me, and I can usually outrun them. And, uh, yep, uh, that's what he wanted, and he made us this way. We we're badass. We don't even know. We don't even know how we got this. <laughs> I was like locked up in the garden of pain. Oh, uh, I said I was a butthole in the body of Christ, and now I say I'm the ass of God. I know I'm the ass of God. <laughs> He's throwing his ass out. Uh, I'm the donkey, singing donkey. So. You guys don't like the word ass? It's in the Bible a hundred times. God can't say his word in his Bible. You don't know God. He can say whatever he wants. You say piss. You say dung. He can say any word for dung he wants. He he doesn't say the S word much. Oh, he can't say it. Um, He can say any word he wants because he's God. And he made the rules. He can't make God. He can't make the rules for God. And... Uh, a lot of y'all think that the word A-S-S is a curse word. It means donkey. It means a body part. Get over it. I thought it too until he started calling me badass girl with a sword. I laughed. I said, what about this language? He started pointing at the King James Bible, tapped on it. He said, you can say it, but I can't. Are you a hypocrite? And so, yeah. And then Abba gave me an Almighty's ass song. One time I got kicked out of church. And I was sitting on my green porch and grieving. And, and Abba came and said, come on, let's look at donkey in the King James Bible. So I looked it up. <laughs> he started telling me jokes about donkeys, jokes about asses. 
and he gave me this ridiculous ass song. Oh my goodness. Oh, my ass, your ass, his ass, thy ass. Uh, drunk ass, slack ass. And then I looked at him, I said, what, slack ass? He chased me, changed it to, don't slack ass. <laughs> and uh, yeah, people kick us out for that even. There's like a hundred times it's in there. That's ridiculous. You're going to kick out God from his own church for saying a word in his own Bible. Get into the word. Figure out what words mean. You know, a lot of times words have two meanings, more than two meanings. They have a lot of meanings. So the Bible um, can speak many different things to many different people, right? Because it has jokes in there about us. And you can probably get them, some of them. And uh, so the way he speaks to us is through, and the Bible says a whole lot of different things. It's four different times for different people for everybody. And every word is God breathed and useful for for instruction. So, I mean, even the extra books are good. And the Song of Ode of Solomon, that's like my song. And then uh, Esdras, Second Esdras, um, Enoch, um, basically all the Enochs. Uh, and it's uh, a lot of them, like on, there's a place I like to watch. I forgot what their name is. But anyway, they're, they're, they have some good old things. But look for the Ode of Solomon. That's about the um, the patriarchs need us. They need us to uh, sing and to sing with them. That's how we all are perfected together. They We need each other, basically. No part can function on its own. And uh, we are the essential parts, the butt part. <laughs> and he has two, apparently. So... Uh, two moons, right? You've been seeing two moons. <laughs> He's mooning, y'all. He does have a sense of humor. He planned all this. And uh, he did plan a lot of jokes about asses, too. You're going to have to get over it because, you know, the ass is like a symbol. And we're going to have to speak in code before long. So if you're going to have to find help, you're going to have to look for the asses because the 144,000 is also the uh, singing donkey army. Um, they're not going to be able to call themselves 144,000. I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say the number in here because people might get our code. But yeah, so nobody watches this anyway. But the way God speaks in parables, he speaks to us in parables. We're going to have to speak in parables. And he retranslated the Bible for us into John's little book, In Time's Welcome Packet Translation. It's cool. It's got songs for everything, changing the weather, healing. Uh, repentance songs and and resurrection it's cool so uh it's part of the it's like you got to have it because it's part of the thunder message everybody got to hear it and you don't want to hear it uh you're going to be left out in the in the in the cold uh basically in the hot weeping and gnashing teeth and that's what it's going to happen so he comes and gives me funny stuff like one time he gave me a vision of goat fish vision, I call it. <laughs> it was so funny. So uh, I said, I asked Dabo, can, can we help me prank Jesus? Because he pranks me so much. I said, we help me prank him back. <laughs> he took me to a clump of bamboo. Behind there was a super soaker full of something yellow. I said, what is that? He said, that's goat piss. I said, oh, no. I laughed and laughed. I said, no, oh, man, he'll clobber me with that. He will clobber me. I cannot do that. And um, I thought it'd be secret. But then, okay, the next day I got kicked out of church. And he didn't, he didn't he, <laughs> and then Jesus came the next day. He said, you know, I have been pissed on by many goats before. I am the good shepherd, you know. <laughs> and they gave me verses about it. Um, so he is not going to let you put him in a box. You guys think you have God in a box? You say, oh, he can't use a woman. He can't use a child. He can use a rock. He can use a rock. He can speak from a donkey. That's basically what he's doing. I'm a donkey. Yep. And that's what he saw. He saw it. He said, hey, Satan, I can beat you with my hand tied behind my back. I can beat you with two donkeys. Let's see what you got. We're like the wild cards he had hidden in his hand. Joker's wild cards, he says. And um, he put jokes about us in the Bible. And oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, we do have the power. Power of life and death and all that. And, uh. Don't get in the way. Get out of the way or come with us, you know. Come help us. Sing with us because we got some songs that will do some powerful stuff. We can change things. And we will change things. We'll do resurrecting and healing and stuff and uh, deliverance 
if anybody wants it, if nobody wants anything, they can just stay with the son of perdition. Like they're basically worshiping and listening to the lying dog. You know, a lot of y'all have polluted wells too. You have some some things from the spirit and some things from the flesh and some things from the devil, some things from your own heart coming out. Um, you need to make sure you have scripture behind what you say. Make sure your heart is clean. Make sure you have on the on the end of times chosen fast, which means not from farm. Get, don't use pharmacy. You can use food, beans and rice, or organic food, or or not. Try not to get gene altered food, and um, no additives or smells or colors or all that. So that's part of it. That's part of why your wells are polluted. Y'all are not preaching the truth. <clears throat> there are a few that are, like maybe a handful. So, if anybody's telling you the rapture date, they're pure liars. You know, if someone lies about it, you know, that means they're a false prophet. If they have a false prophecy that doesn't come true, they're a false prophet. The only true prophet is God. He said, all y'all false prophets. He even said, I was a false prophet because I, I said, all dogs go to heaven. He said, man, you're a false pet prophet. If I, if I take all the dogs to heaven, we're going to have any room for anybody. <laughs> false pet prophet. Uh, yeah, I confess that I was a false pet prophet. So you need to check the scriptures and see what I have to say is true. You'll see it if you look at it, if you read what I got to write, because it's amazing. But he puts so much in every letter. It's way a lot. So I need to. So you need to pick something that you want to figure out from my letters and then from his letters. It's not my letters. It's not my words I'm speaking. I don't speak. I'm a donkey. Um, the Revelation 12 signs, the sign of two witnesses. You guys got to get over that stuff about thinking there are two men from outer space you're not gonna lie that did come and anoint us actually elijah their spirit is what he sent he doesn't reincarnate people Mo he doesn't reincarnate Moses. the spirit and they actually they might come they're supposed to come they're actually here now all the all the heavens is coming here the great cloud of witnesses surround us so they're with us and uh oh so, yeah, don't be that guy trying to get cast out to the weeping outer, outer darkness and gnashing of teeth. Don't be that guy that's going to be left out in the cold or left in the crib. Get snatched through the fire. Get out of the fire now. He snatched me already out of it. And he purged me, shook me, uh, turned me inside out, looked at me with a microscope. I gave a count of every other word I spoke. It was painful. Man, I said, oh, how did you even use me all this time? He did, though. He answered my prayers on the nightly news for 35 years. Holy double glory to God. He taught me. He taught me how to change the weather. Easy. I thought I was the only one asking. But I just asked in simple faith, and he does. It must be a gift. And then I used it so much, he said, oh, I'm going to multiply that. So all these gifts, I was like, oh, these are so cool. Like the gift of discernment I was born with. And, um. That was painful too. All these gifts are painful. Discernment is painful because you, uh, a lot of things are evil that you see. So first thing I saw was the devil looking at me. And I was like an idiot. I said, hit me with your best shot. He took it literal. And um, he didn't try to beat me, but he didn't. He tried to kill me and many times. And then <laughs> I faced Satan in the court of heaven and told my testimony. And Satan lost. They were waiting for us there. They were waiting for us. They're like having a parade for seven days. Seven days. What? <laughs> um, you know, I never heard of anything like this. And this is all like being revealed right now. And people don't like it. It's like new wine, sweet new wine. This is all written in John's little book. It's written in the Bible. It's written in the Bible too. I have all this stuff backed up by many, 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 many letters. Like probably 3,000 letters from God. <laughs> if I can even find the name. The names of the letters is in my notes, but you know what? I can figure it out really quick if you ask me any questions. I can figure out some verses about it. Mm -hmm. Like what happened in, was hate saying in heaven was in Zechariah 3. Um, he changed my clothes and put on his red robe. That stood me there. And then he gave me the white stone with seven eyes and taught me how to use it. And wow, it's really cool. And he wants me to give it to you guys. That's the spirit of wisdom. and might and understanding and knowledge it's really cool that's like the um the holy spirit basically um that's what we have to give you guys and the white stone with seven eyes you need oh it's so cool
And all these gifts she gave us are so cool. The children's stories. Um, the jokes are good for sharing the gospel. He even gave me Holy Ghost stories one time. I said, can you have me a ghost story? Came back with the Holy Ghost stories. <laughs> like how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to raise the dead in Christ. Um, it's so funny. And uh, so there's other things that uh, he speaks to us in, in every single way, you know, like through jokes, through songs, through um uh, sense through uh through a sight through hearing through the word through mostly through the word he speaks but he speaks through songs and videos like about flowers and movies there's movies about us man fisher king and i pet, i piss and pet goat and mary poppins i'm mary poppins and uh i think he's jack <laughs> but we're not romantically together he's like my son right and uh so yeah, we agreed together. Two to agree together on earth about every little thing. So he wanted us to sing the whole chapters of the Bible together and agree on it. And man, I was like, okay, I'll do it. It's cool because it sounds, Isaiah 26 was a really cool song. And so I'd sing it every day. And then I found myself in an arena singing with Hep, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. I was like, wow, it opens the gates of heaven. And then he showed me in Hosea 2, 14 to 19. A singing woman pet prophet and a covenant with the animals at the end time. Man, who is that? He told me, turned me into a weirdo pet prophet a couple years ago. Told me a story about the rhinoceros rapture and the animals when he was born in a barn talking to each other. The rhinoceros there. So cute. And I don't know how the rhinoceros got there, but the rhinoceros is a unicorn. He can fly. He's got a, got special powers, apparently. Uh, it's a rhinoceros of Jesus. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, there's other things, uh, the, the rhinoceros of Jesus and his pride, <laughs> the rhinoceros in the room. <laughs> oh man, I can't even talk now. I'm so, I'm laughing. But, um, yeah, we were laughing prophets too. Okay. The two witnesses are singing, dancing, um, devil butt kicking. Let's see. What else? Weather changing, um, resurrection. And dividing of sheep and goats, and then what else? Um, new naming children's and pet prophets. There's a covenant with the animals at the end time. Animals going to heaven, hallelujah! That's the best way to share the gospel. You know, Elijah saying to share the gospel with children's stories like Jesus did, he must have had them on his lap telling them stories, like I do. I give them stories all the time. Everybody gets the story because these things are so cute. The rhinoceros rapture is a parable. And he gave me like 12 or 13 stories, maybe at least. And then um, I get more every week. And um, some stories from the animals in heaven. <laughs> I ain't never heard of this. I had not seen or ear heard, but he knows what we like. He knows what we like. He's got like our beautiful mansions. You know what they look like? Look at the gardens of the earth. Um, those are like our mansions. Man, they are so cool. He's got everything like you would like. Mine has three barns full of horses. The first thing he showed me there, he took me there um, right after Christmas, and he's, he wanted to give me presents. I was like, I always want a horse for Christmas. He gave me like 300 head of horses. And then I got more. Oh, and then, uh, so three barns full of them. And they had trick horses like Lipizans. They had war horses from heaven, four of them. He introduced them to me, told me their names, thunder, lightning, gold, and silver. And now I find out about the four horsemen. I know the four horsemen are the good guys, people. That's uh, the four winds of heaven. That's the chariots of Elijah. That's the scroll going out. That's the, uh, what else? The, uh, the measuring way. And that's the end time judgment. And it was hidden also. So it looks bad, right? That, that looks bad the way they're talked about in there. But there's an explanation to it. It was just that God, John didn't have enough paper. <laughs> he didn't. And then he said, oh, it would take all the world to write all this down. I can't write all this down. So he had to condense it. And now I've used up my memory like three times. So it's a lot to say. And he says it in so many different ways. So many ways. So. Um, he did it line upon line, precept upon precept, explaining every single word of the Bible, every single line and tittle of it. Um, he explained all of it. And um, 
Yeah, we are not political, okay, people? We are not going to get into politics. We are not going to try to save Babylon. We are not for a man. A man is not going to save you at the end times. Get over it. Uh, God sets up kings and brings them down. He's got plans and you aren't going to change it. Scripture is going to be fulfilled. Get over it. Babylon is falling. And I can't help you with that. But we do not uh, do politics. Like the angel of the Lord. They said, which side are you on? He said, neither. I'm the side of the Lord. Right? All right. That's where we are. We're not on your side or anybody else's side. We're on God's side. We love the creator more than we love the creation. And what he said we're going to do, we're going to do. You guys, we'll post five letters in your YouTube. You might not even read them all, but you read some of them. If you heard them, that would be awesome. If you heard them, we might give you more. And if you um, like them, we'll probably talk. If you've talked to us, we'll talk to you. If you um, like, give us a comment, we'll talk to you. And if you're nice, we'll give you sweet new names and a new name song. And give you some like gifts, like um, some stories and jokes to anoint you with all of gladness. And like some healing songs or something. We like to post healing songs if, if anybody gets some. That's that's where it comes from. Uh, he has a lot to say to you guys, and it's not us saying it, so don't blame the messenger. Uh, he said, Jeremiah said I can blame him for all these bad stuff, but uh, you know he's already <laughs> he's beyond blame. <laughs> Anybody else see Jeremiah yet? Man, he's sweet. They love us. We're their fruit. But yeah, beware of dissing the wits. I, I really want to go in everywhere I go and say, please don't diss us because I don't want to see what happened to you. He showed us what happened to these people. I asked about this one guy. Doesn't get healed. Oh, well, he kicked you out, didn't he? I asked about this lady who died. Oh, well, she kicked you out, didn't she? And then I asked about these people that got judged. Oh, well, they kicked you out, didn't they? And then I asked about the people that they were with them. I said, what about these people that followed him? Oh, they he they were with him that kicked you out. <gasps> what? Oh, man. This is hard judgment. So get on the stick, people. Oh, my goodness. I feel like the, worst, the most badass prophet ever. Prophetess. I call myself prophetess. Ass of God, basically. Um, when you light fires. You know, he did Maui, right? Maui. I have a lot of proof about that. Scripture, scripture about Maui. He gave us a fire whirlwind song. And he also sends stupid. So the evil brutes. He sent evil brutes. He allowed those evil brutes to do that. Because he went to Maui. He said, I'm going to leave my heart with you while I go do judgment. And he came back from Maui. And that place was gone. Uh, and he gave me verses about it. I said, did you do that? <laughs> it was gone. Um... Yeah, we were singing, Behold, I come with fire in the whirlwind, to render my anger with fury, and my rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by my sword shall the Lord flee with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And we see literal fires light. That's what's happening. Get out of that way of that fire. Uh, yeah, the warning is true. We do sing fire. <laughs> uh, we got fire coming out everywhere. I have fire out my butt, probably. I mean, he's got a lot of stories about the kids. <laughs> Never mind. Fire fart. <laughs> a dog fire fart. <laughs> you know? Anyway, uh, we are unconventional. Everybody been calling these unconventional prophets. He didn't know how unconventional he could be. You know, he has a disguise, right? He said, I'm coming in disguise. Well, he chose, <laughs> he chose a, a donkey disguise, basically. He coming in us, and he's coming back bodily. Stand on the Mount of Olives, apparently, but uh, he's ready here in us right now. We go before him because, you know, you can't meet God like this. Your state is not ready. Uh, I, he had purred me, and he poured out perfume on me, like a whole bunch of perfume. Probably my whole body with perfume. Everybody in heaven annoyed me. All the angels of heaven. I cannot make any of this up. The animals and the, the angels joke around with us. They break us. <laughs> oh, my angel. <laughs> His name is Clyde. He's a good cook. And he's funny. And the way they always have a contest to see who can prank me the most. Or he can get me off my float the fastest. Like, um, I challenge him to that. So I'll get on my float in my hot tub. And they'll say, I'll say, all right, can you get me off? I'm, per I'm braced. 
Uh, start spinning around. Um, <laughs> and uh, or they dump me over backwards or whatever. I don't know. It just happens. It's weird. And some of the jokes are so bad. <laughs> uh, one guy said, well, I'll get you off real fast. I don't even have to touch you. Let me have some of that milk that you got, mama. I said, what? <laughs> I jumped in the water. <laughs> It's going to nurse for me. I said, oh, you know, the Abba has milk, right? So, <laughs> what? I said, no, no, no. I was in that water so fast. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty fun to be us. But it wasn't fun in a long time. We paid a high price. Oh, my goodness. The suffering was horrible. Horrendous. I wish I'd never been born. Like Jeremiah and um, all those people. Oh, you have to suffer. To be like this. you have to suffer big time to be a two witness man people think they um there's people out there saying they're they're like 20 or 30 years old they're saying i'm a two witness. <laughs> a lot of people oh y'all are not two witnesses none of y'all none of y'all are two witnesses <laughs> i can't tell you that right now get over it oh my goodness i wish i could i wish i could give you guys some of this i can if you want to get it but if you're going to pose and posture and be pride i can't give you a thing because it'll make you worse we're trying to curb that pride and posture. That's why he gave it to us, because everybody's so puffed up. People are so puffed up and proud, so proud of their stuff. Oh, and uh, we aren't going to get proud, because we got a lot of thorns. We got beat down. Yeah, we got some thorns even still. I, I never even had a job. I couldn't even get a job, because I, I, I was sick my entire life. I was looking, trying to fight it all my life, trying to get a career. I mean, the kid didn't work a whole day. So he always provided for me. And now he provides for me. And where he guides, he provides. So uh, that's fulfilled scripture. You did not do that. If any of you worked, I mean, the boy worked. He was, he's John. John worked. Most must have. He might not have. I don't know what he had to fulfill. He had to fulfill limitations and the young man's scriptures. And the young man who, the spirit of the two witnesses was with Jesus when he rose from the dead. That was the angel that was with him and the young man that was with him, all right? That means it's a, a young man, the man child. And the man child spirit went into John, the, the youngest disciple, the disciple Jesus loved. So John got all the equipment. It's got to be John. If you don't believe me, it's me. At least you know it's John. And, and the man child has to be delivered. And I know where he is and how he how to do it. Uh, you have never heard of anything like this. This is a new thing springing up. He said, see, forget the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Even now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? A lot of this is all in John's little book and all in the no Old Testament. It's all pulled together in my notes. If you guys will take the time to look at it and listen, you will see if you're not Pharisees or puffed up. But get some new wine skin. Soften up your old wine skins with repentance and go on the fast. So um, I, I'm trying to help. We're here to help. He gave us a gift. We're a gift for you guys. He gave us a new name for you guys. Like your crowns. Like y'all stomping on your crowns. Don't be stomping on your crowns. Oh, your new names are sweet. I mean, unless you get new bad names. A lot of people get new bad names. They won't even, they keep dissing the wits. Oh, yeah, we'll give you a new bad name. He, he gives you new bad names. There's a lot of people got those. They're not pretty. You'll never be able to live it down. Probably not even going because um, he separates you with bad names. <laughs> and he excommunicates you. When you excommunicate him, he excommunicates you. He turns you over to Satan. That's basically why you can't diss the wits. Even if we appear different, have a different opinion of you than you, you need to read our letters. You need to read them. You need to look at the facts and the word. And it's the way God speaks. You need to learn how he speaks. Because you guys are hearing a lot of voices you shouldn't be hearing. A lot of false doctrine. A lot of a lot of spirits that are out there. You need discernment so bad. Ask for discernment. I don't even think you ought to ask for the gift of prophecy. Ask for discernment. <laughs> because, man, you guys are getting in trouble with that. Um, you're letting you're going off on a tangent with some other spirit, and the wells are polluted. I mean, people are getting into political stuff. People are getting into saying things about what's happening in Israel that are not right, and saying that uh, 
People are not preaching against the marker. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be said. People aren't talking about the resurrection songs, right? You know, the watchmen sing, they'll see eye to eye, and the Lord will deliver us, that kind of thing. Did anybody ever see that? No. So if you have this, go with it. Go with give it. Tell, tell me if you have all this. If you have all this down, tell me. And then you won't need the two witnesses. Right? But you do need us. So what temple do we measure? I thought you were the temple of God, right? The temple of God is within. You know how many verses are about that? Probably 20. 20, 20 verses at least. And I give it to people. They don't care. It's like, oh, get out. We want a temple on the earth. Man. The temple is, is with man. Hearts of men. The temple is being built in heaven. I went there. And they were having a service on it. On the foundation. Yeah, like they did when I was, was I first found Jesus. They had a service on the foundation of the church. It was so cute. They, I guess they do that for me, though. They have things set up for me. Like, it's so weird. They have, like, a whole concert, like, on, um, like, songs on YouTube I'll see, or flowers or something, and they'll give me a vision and sing to me with other songs. Even the animals sing. <laughs> and the flowers sing. So cool. And they go swimming down the river life and all that. And, you know, we are kind of philosophers too. <laughs> Philosophizing. He gives us wit wisdom, uh, wit proverbs. He calls them witty, witty sayings. The witness thing is such a uh, perfect word for him to play on it. You know, he calls us twits. Two twits. One time somebody said, uh, the two witnesses are going to build a temple. He said, none of my two twits are going to build a temple for the Antichrist to defile. He already defiled my temple. Look at that. He's not going to get any more. And what kind of temple on the earth will ever be? Holy place. Jesus already died for you. Died for your sins. They know there's way to God. It's not going to be holy. So it's not necessary. And uh, he, yeah, so things like that. And he tells me manners jokes, man. It's Oh, he jokes around with me all night. So we're going to have joke night tonight. I hope I'll have some good stuff for you tomorrow. I'll post it if I do. Um, it has so outrageous the way he talks, isn't it? I mean, so different and unique. But he said, I'm doing a new thing. He wants to do it different. Shake things up. The people are needing to get out of their ruts. They're in their holes. They're in the, you will dig a hole for yourself and you ain't going to get out. You put your own self in a box. You got to get out of your box. And um, you seek the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is joyful. Laughter, gladness, um, resurrection, life, and forgiveness, and mercy, and justice. That's what you need. You don't need all this hate and vain imagination and falsehood. Puff uppery, all right? So let's get on the stick. All right. Sound like a drill sergeant. I've never been like this before. He turned me into a... Uh, I sometimes feel like a monster. <laughs> Fire breathe the monster. All right. Anyway, I love you guys. I really do. And I hope you can hear me. It's going to be so cool if you listen. God bless. May our Lord equip you.